Shanghai has the most cafes in the world, surpassing Tokyo and London. And that's why a lot of these cafes do push the boundaries when it comes to creating innovative brews, to mixing unexpected flavors, because the market is just so tough and basic coffee is just not going to suffice the appetite of the market. So this week I've tried different coffee experiences. Uh, some are really good, um, but some not so much. So let's check it out. This boutique neighborhood cafe is called Follow. And I believe that these two are the owners of this cafe. Their signature drink has three main ingredients, coffee, yogurt, and this fermented sticky rice called Chonyang in Mandarin. The barista told me to take a mouthful of all three flavors together to get the full experience, and he was right. The flavors melded together perfectly. What really impressed me is how they've integrated local Shanghainese flavors into their cafe concept. It's such a clever way to pay homage to the city's culinary heritage while still offering something fresh and exciting. I absolutely love it when a place combines tradition with innovation, and Follow has nailed it. Mstan is a local chain and was established in 2017 and has quickly gained popularity. Today, I'm excited to order one of their most innovative and enjoyable coffees. What makes it even more special is that you can consume both the coffee and the cup. The cup is made of oatmeal cookie, but don't worry, the coffee won't melt it because the inner part is cleverly coated with a layer of white chocolate sauce, acting as a protective barrier. It's a delightful treat for those with a sweet tooth. It's like having coffee accompanied by a dessert. Personally, I enjoy the indulgence, however, I'm still currently debating whether to finish it or not because it's really quite filling. Recently, I stumbled upon a very popular soy sauce latte. It's located just around a block from my place. I'm excited to give it a try and so I brought Shishi, my dog, because it's known to be a dog-friendly cafe. Although it's a small establishment, it exudes a cozy vibe and very charming and to my surprise, I even had a chance to meet the owner who was also featured in this magazine. To fully enjoy the experience, I opted to savor my soy sauce latte in the park, which is just adjacent to the cafe. Contrary to my expectations, the coffee doesn't actually contain regular soy sauce. I think it's a unique blend that offers a subtle hint of umami without really being overwhelmingly savory. The flavor reminds me of coffee with a touch of soy, reminiscent of a blend between tofu and a sweet umami note. Surprisingly, I found it quite enjoyable and would definitely give it a try in the future. Dirty So is located in the heart of the former French concession in Shanghai. It is in a charming street and has a boutique-like atmosphere. The cafe was founded by two baristas who previously worked in the industry as advisors prior to deciding to have their own business. True to their namesake, Dirty So offers a really wide range of dirty coffees and I was so intrigued to try the sea moss as it just caught my eye. The coffee itself tasted really amazing even without any additions. However, the sea moss imparted a very bitter flavor and that is why the barista asked me to drink it on the side without the sea moss first and eventually the sea moss will just subside at the bottom so you don't actually drink it. I'm biased towards Queen Cafe and I actually want to come back here to try their other flavors. Luckin is the biggest coffee chain in China, even much bigger than Starbucks. Earlier this month in September, they just launched their new and limited edition coffee. It's a collaboration between Luckin and Mao Tai, the number one and most prestigious baijiu or Chinese wine, which is actually a liquor similar to vodka. They have been competing really hard for this product and when I went to the cinema to watch Oppenheimer, they were playing three or four commercials back to back simultaneously and I think it was an overnight sensation because they were able to sold like 5.4 million cups in just one day during the launch and the difference between this one compared to the 
original baijiu or mao tai is that the alcohol content usually is about 40 to even higher than 50% but this one only has 0.5% so you won't get drunk when you drink it as for taste I feel it's a bit disappointing um, it's just watered down latte with a hint of this weird flavor from the liquor which did not hit the mark either but they were successful in really creating this hype because a lot of people were queuing for this coffee but I feel that not a lot of people will actually come back for a second but that's my personal opinion and I feel that I don't want to finish this at all because it's I just find that the taste is kind of weird honestly I also have another coffee vlog and wherein I was able to go to different cafes and try their coffee so please check it out and I'll see you in the next video.